talking with Rob McEwen with McEwen Mining. Uh, thank you very much for your time. You had an arresting slide this morning where you were looking at the S&P 500. 6.3% of equities were tied up in gold companies. Now that's down to less than 0.1%. What has been the change over this 80 years that uh, there just has been less interest or less people that have been investing in gold? I'd say there, there's new industries that have been created mm -hmm. and their market caps have exploded. Technology, mm -hmm. um, I mean we had new technologies then but I think more of the world is involved in the market. Back in 38, it's probably 10% of the population, mm -hmm. adult population was in the market. Today you probably have more than 90% mm -hmm. either directly or indirectly. So uh, there's been an expansion and gold is at this point considered not as relevant to investors. What is, uh, what is the message to investors uh, going and then talking about getting the interest back in bullion? The message is that um, stock markets are cyclical, mm -hmm. commodity markets are cyclical, and there are times when they're low relative to the broad market and there are other times when they become much more valuable. And I think we're moving into that space right now. If you look at one of the other slides was on gold equities. In the last 77 years, there's been eight bear markets in gold equities. And the last one we were in was the deepest and longest of all the bear markets in the last 77 years. But in the same period, there's been six bull markets. And the average gain is 540%. Uh, we're in the seventh bull market right now. We're only up 170% from the beginning of 16. So there's probably a double, if not a triple from here. And the broad market is quite elevated and the gold market's quite low. So if you're a contrarian investor, this is a good time to move into something that has low downside and much greater upside than the broad market. What have been the factors that you see, like you will see like gold going up, where you will actually see one of these peaks again that will happen? What have you found that have been the underlying factors in the economy? Probably one of the, the prime determinants right now is the strength of the US dollar. If confidence in the dollar were to wane, then you'd start seeing all commodity prices starting to move up more. Um, if you look at other currencies in the world, they're already doing that. You look at the Canadian dollar, gold's up close to its old highs. Um, and that's happening in about 72 currencies around the world. Right now, there's just money flooding into the U.S. because their stock market is strong, and that's been strengthening their dollar. You have, uh, talking about investor interest, has been uh, the electrical vehicle space. Uh, you have the large copper project in Argentina. What makes it an asset uh, that's worth paying attention to, to people that are interested in electric vehicles? It's a big wild card. Mm -hmm. I, the mineral inventory is about 30 billion pounds of copper. Yeah. Uh, right now, you know, if you value it at a penny a pound, it's $300 million. You move mm -hmm. it to two cents a pound, it's uh, $600 million. It's a lot of leverage. In the last bull market in copper, asset properties were going for seven cents a pound. So there's a, there's a strong um, upside potential in there. Um, electric vehicles, Tesla pioneered the game. Now all the manufacturers in the world, are, mm. car manufacturers are building electric vehicles. China sold last year more vehicles twice as many vehicles in China that were electric than Tesla sold worldwide. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to see big demand. I think it's about 180 pounds of mm -hmm. copper in an electric car, um, sedan size. So if we move from less than 1% of the vehicles being made to 10%, mm -hmm. there's going to be a real shortage of copper. And that's good for us. For Going back to gold, uh, talking about uh, the mergers that we've seen at the uh, top of the chain, we've seen the uh, barracks and what's happening with uh, Newmont, and uh, there's going to be some assets that are going to be coming onto the space as uh, these companies uh, streamline their operations. What's going to happen with those assets that are coming on? How is that going to impact the sector? Well, the investment bankers have been running around for a couple of months in advance of the mergers, mm -hmm. saying here are the likely dispositions coming out of this these big mergers. Hmm. So that's going to put product on the market. At the same time, you've seen juniors and intermediates who would like to get partners or sell. I think it's going to, uh, for a moment, hold the, the market 
down because of the excess supply. Uh, but you are seeing people coming in. We're seeing Australia show up just recently, buying Atlantic gold. Um, that happened about 20 years ago, the Australians came to North America and mm -hmm. seem to be doing it again. Mm -hmm. So all that is adding more news, which I think is good for the market. It's drawing attention to the market to say, there's something happening in this space. And when that starts happening, maybe investors will start looking and saying, yes, gold isn't up much in the last three years. Since the beginning of 16, gold's up about 22% in US dollar terms. But, and the Dow's up 43, 44%. The S&P is up about 40. So the broad market's done better than twice what gold has. But the GDX, which is a measure of an ETF of the senior gold stocks and intermediates, is up more than the Dow. And to, I believe, for most people, that comes as a surprise, that you're up more than 50% since the beginning of 16 if you'd bought the GDX. So the more attention we get through takeovers, mergers, the better it is and draws people to say, we're at the bottom of the cycle in the metal space and there's considerable room on the upside. But in the broad market, we've had better than eight years of very strong markets. And so we're right near the top. So it's a good time to be thinking about, well, maybe gold and some hard assets would be good insurance for a portfolio that's near the, the top of the cycle. Thank you very much. My name is Michael McRae. I'm with Kitco News. I've been talking to Rob McEwen here at the Hard Ask Conference at uh, Palisades in Jekyll Island. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Much appreciated.